Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not exposed. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Whole Liloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaking motherfuckers, Sebastian's Adams. On today's episode, we are talking about Chapter 7 of the Essential Guide on How to Be a Hoe. Not really, but essentially, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about building a motherfucking roster, and I think that's actually Chapter 8. Mm, I need to know my own book, y'all. I'm sorry. Um <laughs> And if you want to get you a copy, it's going to be in the show notes. Just look in there. Everything's always in the show notes. So on today's episode, we have him back. That motherfucker, Hakeem. Um, <laughs> we have Sharita. And we also have Tyrell. How are y'all doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah. Um, it's a pleasure to have y'all with me. So as I said, we are talking about building a roster we're going to be talking about some rotation shit and i hope if you have not had a rotation in your life at this point i just want to know why not or is there anything preventing you from having a rotation or whatever it is we're going to get to that a little bit later but first off has any one of you built a roster in the past or currently have a roster or will have a roster in the future yes <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to say anything. <laughs> I can talk about sex all day, but when it comes to building a roster, it's like, oh, oh, well, hold on. <laughs> right, like, this fit, like, this fit, like a whole class of five. <laughs> I was over here, hold up, did, did everybody fucking drop? <laughs> the suspense. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so Sharita has uh, had a roster at one point, or has one, Hakeem. Um, I do not have a roster. I have potentials. Um, like you know, you know, you know, you be scouting. Like you know, you be like, oh, I like the way they swing. Like, let me go ahead and drop that oh, down. So he's 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 building. He's he's in the process of finding some kind of roster ship. Okay, exactly. Tyra. Yeah, um, I'm kind of like with Hakeem, like, yeah, I don't necessarily be- have like a roster, mm-hmm. but I do like, I actually do keep, um, and this is also for like any type of health concerns or health reasons for anything. Like I do keep like who I've been intimate with, like in a, like a memo file on my phone and like next to a date, uh, just so, you know, just mm-hmm. to like track, mm-hmm. just to like track, track stuff, just in case anything, you know, was to ever happen. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like, as I think about like having a, a roster, I do like to look at that list though, because then it reminds me like of like how I not necessarily rank my experiences, but like experiences that like I've really enjoyed. Like if that person was to hit me up again, like what, even if I'm not in the mood, I could get in the mood for, for whatever they, they come in with. So Tyrell, so what you're telling us is that you have a little black book on your phone. <laughs> 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 you know i have yeah. not i i have not heard of a little black book in so long i miss those kind of conversations like in media and stuff like that talking about oh they got you penciled in and all this other stuff uh she got her black book he got his black book all this shit we need to bring back the black books we need to bring back those black books of everybody that you know that's what i need to do 
I, I, I'm going to get me a black book so I can start listing motherfuckers' names on there and just like, you know what? I know, because, you know, that's essentially what it was back yeah. in the day. People's but, numbers and who you need, but to, you contact, see, you need to contact. But you see, the thing is, is that you can also, you know, I always say, you know, be careful when you have whole moments by accident because, <laughs> because with your roster, with whatever roster you keep in, you could like slip, like if you're trying to be good, you could like slip back into something if you're like with the right person at the wrong time. That's all I'm saying. Oh. So I'm just saying, be careful of your, be careful of having accidental whole moments. Like it's okay to embrace the whole within mm-hmm. you, but just be careful of when you accidentally slip back. Mm. Be responsible. Yeah. Be a responsible whole y'all. Be a responsible whole y'all. <laughs> so Sharita, yeah. how is your roster? Like, so my roster is always weird because it's like, well, okay, everyone has someone that they could hook up with, right? The mm. potential thing, like Hakeem was saying, but like a lot of the times, my roster um, has been—I don't have a roster now—has been like by happenstance. Mm. And so, like a good example of that was like last year, I was dating, like I was serial dating like two or three people or whatever but only like serious for one person and a like a a good friend that i used to know came by the house looking for my brother and i was like oh hey how are you doing blah blah he's like are you dating are you still single and i was like well i'm not in anything like any relationship but i'm like dating around and he was like can i get added to the roster and i was like oh okay yeah sure i guess so it's like damn like, for me, it's always, like, these one-off situations where, like, even I had a situation yesterday where I met someone, and they were cool, and they were like, hey, like, let's start, like, hooking up. Like, I really like you, and you just, like, you're there's something about you that's just so special. I feel super safe around you. We start talking about doms and subs, and I'm just like, dang, that's my first time hanging out, but okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that therapist vibe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right like, like i'm finna bring out the whole bro thing. so it's like it's always been that and i've been like uh next thing i know it's like i meet three people and they all like me and they all and i'm like okay sure if you want to be a part of this <laughs> like i'm poly so like it's cool like if i have a good vibe with someone and you're my friend i don't really do like I'm not gonna hook up with someone typically on the first time hanging out with them. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Um, And no shame to people who do. Like, I just have to have that connection. And usually it takes more than one meeting to have that connection. Um, But yeah, like they all just, people are so enthralled. I don't know if it's my energy or whatever I've been told. I have like a blue energy. Um, And I'm just like, okay, cool, sure. Fine. <laughs> like that is never intentional though. I like that. Child universe, what the fuck are you doing? Um <laughs> I know like uh when with my rosters, uh it's always random too, but it's like back in the day it was more or less intentional. It was like situationship kind of things, and you got people who are kind of, you know, you're meeting up with on a um, recurring basis, knowing nothing's like really going to be anything serious. You're just chilling, having a good time, or whatever, and then you just start like, hey, I like your energy, you like my energy, we should really do this, uh, you know, a lot more often. Now, I will say these days, there's too many people in their feelings to actually want to establish something like that because it's like well i want to know who you're spending your time with with uh, like uh, are you spending your time with him are you spending your time with her and i'm just like is that in your business like yeah yeah it's kind of like i need to know like because it would be one of those situations like i would love to like have like a friendship sort of situation but it's kind of like yeah we can get high and heavy in a minute but it's kind of like i can't even go to that point because i need to know like you know are you gonna like lose your mind like if you, <laughs> like you know and i need to know. so it's like there are certain things like i need to know and certain things that, that are not like safe to do now mm. because like like you say people really be in their feelings where it's kind of like your roster has to now be put into subsections mm-hmm. like I can, <laughs> so it's like i can only deal with you on certain occasions Mm -hmm. and if you just happen to come around when i'm actually in that mood then yeah 
let's do it. But a lot of times that's supposed to be the miscount with me. Like sometimes like people be hitting me up and I'm just like really not feeling it like at the moment. Mm. Yeah. I, I know like for myself when it comes to like if I'm building actively building a roster because I'm, I'm in that process right now and I don't I don't want anybody on my roster that I can't just have a generalized conversation with or just chill with on a regular basis like if you're just here for the sex that's fine you're not going to ever be like top priority but it's like if I'm in that field, if I'm in the zone and I know like your schedule like my, my regular um, I well uh, actually his schedule changed up a little bit but like i used to know his schedule he knew my schedule and it's just like hey if you're horny i'm horny we can go ahead and meet up and that's it um but i like to have people that i can still have great conversation with check in on every now and again see how they doing and still have a enjoyable sexual uh, sexual experience and we all mutually know that we're not seeing each other uh like exclusively and we're here for the pleasure as well as the friendship and the bond that goes with that and that's exactly. the thing that i like a lot about the rosters that i build and, but it's, it takes a, a lot of trial and error with that because you still have to get to know people's persona and then also see how you match sexually and if uh, the sexual chemistry or the uh, need for sexual exploration is not there then it's like then it's not that i don't have a place for you it's just like you're not going to be in that category of what i want to pursue on an ongoing basis unless i'm looking for this exact one kind of thing in that one kind of thing only yeah yeah no it definitely it definitely is and yeah because and so it's so much it you know you would think like I, like you say i miss the days of just having like the little black book because it's not to say like it was simpler but as we moved on and like obviously we're into the whole social media age and you know just things like that it's like there are many factors that complicate having a roster now mm -hmm. that it's like it's not just a black and white you know kind of thing where it's like there are just like a lot of moving components mm -hmm. to it and if you're not careful then you haven't finding yourself dealing with one situation or multiple situations that you know you got to put in check mm -hmm. like i refuse to have someone who's married on my roster <laughs> the reason why is because mofos be lying and i'm not trying to be caught up um somebody's spouse is like pulling up uh, all angry unless um it's like uh, a couple that i'm actually actively having threesomes with but other than that, I'm not trying to deal with anybody in any kind of uh, in any kind of relationship because I don't want your partner to feel like I'm taking away from them, as well as I don't want to uh, ha engage in that risk of them not knowing that we're seeing each other. It's like it's too many factors, and then uh, I do like to go out on friend dates and, uh, every now and again. So. If I can't take you to a restaurant or we, well, not like I'm taking you out on a date, but you know, like if we cannot go to a restaurant together and enjoy time that way, have a couple drinks, conversations, then it's like, what's, you can't be on my roster because of that. Like, why are you here? Like, if, if you want to just keep it sexual, I, I guess just don't ex don't expect that going, that's going to be like our ongoing thing you might be one of those people i just reach out to once a month because the roster's full you just like third string at this point uh, <laughs> i mean yeah i get that um and to kind of like add on to that i know that like you said something like the friend friend dates mm -hmm. it, like I get the point of having a roster. It's like to, to designate them their role and everything like that. Um, but also like depending on the person, like you gotta know, all right, I can't take this person out and I, I can take this person out, but I can't pay for everything. Or or, or cause they gonna then they're gonna be like, Oh, we in a relationship kind of shit. Mm -hmm. I can't fuck this person this too this well because if they do or if I do, then they're gonna kinda think okay, we in so a relationship. Nice. Right. <laughs> So it's like you can build a roster, but you also got to know like how people act. Like uh, Tyrell said, like you got to know how people are <laughs> before you just start adding people willy nilly. Um, because, hey, like dick and ass, like that'll, 
I don't fuck you over every time. <laughs> I feel like as a poly person, my go-to is always to communicate that, right? And when yeah. I see these changes in behavior, I always address it. So like, I'm treating everybody the same, but if I see, okay, this person's like texting me a lot more, sending me these emojis, doing a little bit extra than they would normally do, then I'm having a conversation and say, hey, I'm noticing this difference. And right now I'm only, I'm not looking for a relationship with you. Um, and if we cannot keep it kind of the same way that we were at, then we need to like figure out something else. Yeah, and same, uh, you know, as Sharita, um, as well as also being on the poly spectrum, there's like certain, even when getting just to know people or in that dating phase, like, you know, being upfront and honest about where you are, you know, what you're looking for. Of course, that's always important in any type of uh, love, in any type of love style approach. Um, but I think also, like, I know for me, one of the first things that I had to figure out in identifying and being a solo poly person is that, you know, did I, cla do I classify, you know, lovers or partners differently than friends with benefits? And for me, emotionally, no, I don't. But the quality time that we spend is different uh, with friends with benefits. It may be something that's a little bit more infrequent. Um, obviously, if I have a lover or a partner, for me, proximity is um, important, even if we are uh, virtual for any type of reason, like the times that we're checking in or establishing, you know, this level of a, you know, relationship, like those things, you know, they matter. And so, you know, if you're not in a space, uh, you know, to clearly communicate that, that's where those lines can be a little bit, you know, blurry. And let's also face it, like some people get, you know, when they get in their feelings, they sometimes get real big ego. So sometimes mm -hmm. like people just got to be put in a place to know, like, just because you are on the roster, you can be replaced. Hey, man. <laughs> Like, <laughs> let's, the conversation lord that part like let's just let's just keep it real like if you start you know acting like you don't have no sense you can be replaced Ooh. that that triggered that triggered some people in my mind like <laughs> you already, you got, i know for me it's like you can be replaced and i already have a couple of bench warmers that are waiting so like yeah play a role you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. yeah. no you're right <laughs> like, no, you're like, right. Oh, not sharita <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am i'll i'll get right i swear <laughs> I, I looked that's 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 that on that that's all i can say um so how many people like what was your max number of people on your roster well sharita because i know you've had one but for the others how however many you had in like a rotation or where however you're building how many potentials y'all got let's put it that way i mean realistically speaking like i can only handle three people um and they have to be like within a certain like driving distance because I am not going my ass up to Atlanta no more. <laughs> <laughs> I am not driving my ass. I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's also a factor because of the fact, like I say, I don't drive. So, um, you know, sometimes when I'm trying to, you know, when I'm spending like this, you know, this ride share money and stuff like that to go visit somebody, I'm like, yeah, there are certain things I'm expecting out of this evening, like not to say like you owe me anything, but like I do have certain expectations. And number one expectation is always just quality time because I love spending quality, you know, quality time with people. But yeah, in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, it's going to be, there needs to be like just a little bit of kissing, a little bit of cuddling, like we don't need to do nothing else, but it's like I came over here for some affection, damn it. <laughs> give me what i want <laughs> I, need, I need this but yeah I, i'm the same way with i can like i can only deal with like um you know two or three in my in my list at a time at a time <clears throat> so uh <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my 11 people <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, not I'm not like that i'm a changed woman now you know what i'm saying i ain't gonna <laughs> Uh, it's the clear throat. I have about me. like five. I think like five or six. Five, but five. like, yeah. Is that like current or is that like your peak? No, in the past. In the past. Right now, I don't have a roster. I mean, there's people who want, there's bench warmers, I guess. So potentials. Mm. But like, I don't have a roster right now. 
I would say my max. Um, this was back in the um, <laughs> bacon days. I, I was a ho 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 ho. ho bacon ho. brings out the ho oh. and everybody. It really does. Uh, I think the max I had uh, was somewhere between five and seven. Um, hmm. and that's also when I tried to do like the compartmentalization, having like a separate phone for the hoes or whatnot. Well, set complete separate number. <laughs> Oh, and that Ooh, couldn't damn. work out for me uh it was too much <laughs> like anybody who like, i tried it a second time in nashville and i only had like three uh and even that trying to balance like the two phones because i had my work phone and then mm -hmm. it's too much i just rather keep everything on one phone uh if you can do it do you but i cannot and, and then also a problem like when you because even like living because like i say like 20 to 25 minutes like from Atlanta and so but even just like meeting people you know, like for friends or whatever like I've had a couple awkward situations where it's like I've talked to somebody we really not hitting it off and so we'll just dismantle you know go our separate ways or sometimes ghosting you know that does happen and then I'll meet them in person because like the person that I know knows them and so mm. I thank my stars that the, in, in those encounters, like it hasn't been somebody I've actually been intimate with, thankfully. Mm. And so it's kind of like, to me, that's also another part about having like a list because if like something happens and then they also, when they're not like, you don't know that they're in your circle of people or outside mm -hmm. circle of people, and then you find that out, mm -hmm. like it can create some awkward situations. Mm. I feel like that's par for the course in the lesbian community though like mm. when like you know I'm really with like a lot of my lesbian friends and stuff like anyone I hook up with it's there's gonna be some degrees of separation and I'm gonna see them again regardless so yeah, yeah I get that like um, most definitely like here in Augusta there's some people that uh, I've hooked up with and randomly on Twitter and I find them in somebody's porn and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't know I was fucking an extra. Damn. <laughs> Not an extra. <laughs> <laughs> but, really wow. but like it's it's when you're in very small towns or um in areas with a very small queer population, it's like I just assume everybody either slept with somebody that I know from like the app or uh, may fuck with somebody that I've met or know. I just like, it is whatever. If y'all not in my same bed at the same time, that's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. If y'all trying to get that set up, we can talk about it, but I don't care as long as we have this conversation about what we are and what we're going to be doing. To right. That's the only thing that happens to me. And I'll say the same thing about like nerd communities as well because the the degrees of set the set of the degrees of separation is super fucking small. <laughs> like if you play cards with somebody like Joe, if you play cards with Joe, I'm pretty sure Joe then fucked Amy, and Amy don't like Joe because you know of some random ass shit. But she digging you like it's weird. <laughs> it's it's oof, it's it's fucking weird when nerds get mad. They get big mad. <laughs> <laughs> Look, hashtag mad nerds. Like, <laughs> nerd, nerd rage. Let's go. Nerd rage. Let's go. <laughs> Like, uh, there's this couple that I hooked up with uh, here in Augusta, and uh, one of them who I communicate with the most is like, yeah, there's some people in this town who you might know who just don't like me. And I was like, okay, one, I just moved back. So you're assuming <laughs> that I, <laughs> I've met how many people, but um, <laughs> like, why why don't people like you? Like, what the hell is going on? I, now we need to have this damn conversation. Like. Mm -hmm. Why why are you saying people got your name on the on the top of their tongue? Let's talk about that. But like these these communities are very, very fucking small. Uh somebody that you know fuck somebody you know. That's all I know. Um now for those wait, how many so three, roughly three, and Shrita said about five. Cool. For those people who are on your rosters are potentials on your roster are they only on there for sexual reasons no no for me no um hmm. i mean not really no like i my roster is like mostly comprised of like people that i just gel with mm -hmm. on like a almost friend level so mm -hmm. 
they like shit. They can easily flip flop between friend or just friends with benefits. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that's what and that's what my thing has always been. Why I've always liked being intimate with with friends because it's like I experience compersion, which is also like. Um, not necessarily under the poly spectrum, but it always gets like associated with poly aspects, where it's, it's like it's very the much the opposite feeling of jealousy. So I like when, you know, I hear stories about, you know, like people talking about like who they've met, like what kinds of new things are they into and, you know, things like that, like that gets me excited. Mm -hmm. So it's like for me, I can only have that kind of comfortability, you know, with friends. So and I always like for, you know, any type of dynamic to be um not necessarily not not transactional that's not, not the word or, but um any time where either of us needs to like disassociate from what it is that we're doing we can do that without it having any type of hang up so that's why i like friendship so i always say say hey if at any point your mind is changing this is not working for you we can just cut out this you know cut out the sex and just you know we still be friends Mm. You know, so I, you know, that's what I like about being intimate with, with like close friends, so. For me, majority of my people, when I did have a roster, were more sexual or like that openness about sexuality. So it wasn't necessarily that we always would have like penetration sex or oral sex, but there would be like that same amount of intimacy. So like fingering or like making out or like cuddling. So there were, it was like a spectrum. There was someone that would just hook up with like, okay, you're on my roster. I'm, I'm expecting to have really bomb sex. And that's kind of where we're at with it. But then there'll be other people where it was like, I just want someone I could talk to and cuddle with. Right. So mm. it, there was a, a variety of it. That motherfucker right there. Yes. I th I don't I don't know how other people do their rosters, but I always recommend having a motherfucker that loves to cuddle because good God, it's always good to have someone. Yeah. I love cuddling. That's my I love I will yeah, cuddle I love all day. <laughs> like there was somebody recently who uh, just uh, messaged me saying, Hey, I just really want to cuddle with you. I was like, Come on, let's do this shit. We <laughs> haven't cuddled yet, but I'm like, let's whenever you get the free time, let's go hang and just cuddle shit pop and I'm here for it. Uh, I, I need I can't, I can't cuddle without being horny. Like <laughs> it just kind of go hand in hand with me. Like, oh, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of like the in between. Like I'm horny, but like I don't necessarily need to do anything. Like I could just be, I could just be hard, and that's and, and you know, like that's it. Like you feel something, but like yeah, don't necessarily have to do anything because of it. But yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm that way. I, I do. I, I, I get horny when I cuddle, but most of the time it's just like reaction. Now, the only time where I don't like, well, I'm not going to say don't like, but like I find like cuddling to be a little bit awkward. And I don't know. This is just me. I'm just weird. Like I have this weird like kind of like morning after thing where it's like I'm not used to like being um away from home after a certain time so mm -hmm. it's like if i like we've spent the night together we've cuddled kissed all that all that is wonderful by the time i get up the next morning like i'm ready to go and it's like if the other person is like still asleep i'm just like i have these really like awkward moments where i'm just like staring at the ceiling i'm really wondering like should i wake them up should i get up like i don't want to like like i just i really don't know what to do because it's like i'm ready to go but it's like, I'm not wanting to be rude about it. But it's like, I want to go. <laughs> I'm the same way. It's really awkward. What I've started doing, and this is even with like friends, because like I'll, I'll hang out at a friend's house and spend a night, but they don't get up until one. Like I always just ask, like, what time do you typically wake up? Mm -hmm. And depending on like, if I'm like, you know, if I've been drinking, I'll still stay there. But if I haven't been and you don't wake up until two o'clock, I'm yeah. leaving before, uh, you know, I'm just leaving ahead of time. Right. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I mean, my friends are like hella, like hella used to me just like disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like literally my friends was like just sit there and like talk to me and then like they'll turn their attention to something else and start talking or doing something else and I'll just leave. Like, and they're like, oh, it's just came being came. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm always just afraid of like setting off an alarm <laughs> as I'm leaving. Exactly. That's that's my that's only right concern. Here. 
My, that's my concern because I'm like, I don't know the fucking code. And I'm over here trying to avoid waking you up. Now that this fucking alarm is off, now I need to come contact you. Like, wake your ass up. Please wake up. This alarm is going off. I'm not trying to be caught up in here and somebody yeah. think I'm breaking in. Oh my God, it's too much shit going on. Help. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can. Mm-mm. Like, I, I will. I typically just like let me just go ahead and go back to my home and just be our hotel and be comfortable because I don't know. I, I just like the security of my own space um, yeah. for the most part. Like that's why I always return home. And, and, and that's why why I have the push and pull because it's like it depends on also like when we're meeting up because it's like if we're not meeting up until late evening or that night like. And, you know, I'm not trying to, like, come over by you for just, like, a few hours and then, like, you know, just, like, leave. Or, you know, I don't necessarily want that. Like, I'll do that. But it's, like, if especially, like, if I haven't seen you in a minute, like, you know, like, just, you know, for us to have more time. So, I actually like spending, you know, time by other, by other people. But it's just one of those things, like, yeah, I need you to, like be even though i'm not necessarily a morning person i need you to be like a morning person because by the morning i'm trying to get Mm. Mm. so what are some lessons that y'all have learned from your experience of like um i i I don't want to say dating per se but in terms like just being out here in these streets um finding potential people or engaging with people that you feel as though that you can further a connection with or let's send that connection um just you know leave them off to the side somewhere what are some of the lessons that y'all learned i would say serial date like until things get well for poly it's a little bit different of course but if you're a monogamous person until things get exclusive serial date date multiple people like talk to multiple people learn about yourself in that as well right so date date yourself and in, included in that mm. oh yes yes for date yourself i am a i support dating yourself every fucking day one uh i'm looking forward to the end of the month because i have a, a date set up for myself and it's going to be real good y'all i'm going to a restaurant i'm going i, I have a little self spa day i'm just <laughs> i'm doing some shit I'm treating I'm treating this nigga right. <laughs> but yes, definitely date yourself, motherfuckers. Uh, what about you, Hakeem Tyrell? What what y'all learn? Uh it's actually interesting. I actually have my very first date in an hour. Um that's gonna that's actually gonna be that's actually gonna be virtual. Yeah, I've never dated um before. Um and um and yeah, so it's something new that I've you know opened myself up to because I used to just have this very rigid view of dating. Um, and so, you know, now being in a different space of knowing myself, self, you know, love, self journey, I'm now actually open to it. So yeah, I actually have my first date actually in another hour. So, so I'm really excited about that. Um, Yeah. But, uh, you know, somebody told me something very interesting once they said, uh, date in private until you're able to love openly. Mm. And I really, and that what stuck out to me about that, Sheree, is just like how you were saying about, um, making sure that you multi-date because that's how you actually get to know yourself you know learn about the things that you like things that you don't like things that you know you want to you know have in another partner or partners and you know date with intention and that's where i've come around to like i said i used to think of dating just as this you know traditional kind of trajectory like this is like the steps that you know have to be done and not recognizing that you know people date just for fun too you know, like, so dating doesn't necessarily have to be all, you know, be this overarching kind of romantic notion just seeps in, you know, to all of these like conventions. And so, yeah, I think as long as like you're honest about your intentions, like, and keep that line of open communication open, I, that's like, it's easy to say it's harder to actually put into practice for many people. But, um, but yeah, just date, date with intention and, yeah even though to multi-date date privately until you know you're able to love openly mm-hmm. so yeah i really like that that's a okay. like that's a nice little lesson right there yeah um i don't really have a lot of, of stuff to say about dating uh only because like i i just i'm just trash at dating like <laughs> <laughs> sheltered uh, yeah i'm very sheltered in that aspect um i i don't know it's just like for me, dating itself is just like one of those awkward things because I have to have pretext. Mm. Um, if I don't have any pretext, I don't 
generally talk to somebody. Um, so it's really awkward dating. Um, dating apps are trash for for me. Like, uh, mm. I, 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 mm, it's a mixed bag with these dating apps. Sometimes you might find something that's like a nice little spark, great uh, conversation, um, great mm-hmm. potential, and then you swipe right, and then it's just like an asshole, and it's just like mm. <laughs> it's yeah. weird. Yeah, and I think like my number one fear, I think about dating is, uh, Vern. You remember how we had like on a previous. Um, kind of episode about we were talking about the nature of sex education the show mm. I feel like I'm gonna be like Otis because I talk like the character Otis because I talk so much about relationships and dating and pe- and you know like people always like want my advice about something but I don't actually have like the application and the practice and so like that's really what's going to be going through my head it's like oh my god i know like all these things about dating and relationships and things like that and now i actually have to put it into practice like i'm gonna go high i'm just gonna go high <laughs> i'm with you there because it's like most definitely when it comes to like um building relationships and just um building like just knowing the triggers that um, people have and it's just like the the issue with me is that i know you know what can make a great healthy relationship my only issue is that i just don't want to be patient for somebody to get on the level that i'm already at mm. and that's the thing that mm-hmm. really hinders me when it comes to like dating other people because i want somebody that i don't have to do so much work with that i don't have to tell you about consent i don't have to have those kind of conversations about right. um you know not everybody's on this app just to uh hook up in that everybody's looking for something immediate even if they're mm-hmm. trying to hook up like it's okay to plan sex for a later date for a later mm-hmm. hour it's okay to just have a conversation with somebody it's okay to just um vocalize your wants and needs to somebody without having to just limit yourself or just um, make everything so sexual and that's, that's, that's the issue i be finding because i'm like i'm not trying to be too educated i'm not trying to be too preachy or anything like that so i do have to hold myself back on that end but it's just like can i just find somebody that just comes built <laughs> that just comes ready out of the fucking package that i don't have to explain so but, much about. But yeah but that's a fact though because it's kind of like and you know as a writer i love to you know reference like have book references and i often always say like you don't necessarily need to always be on the same page but you do need to be in the same chapter of the same book mm-hmm. like you know if we not if we not there then it's like oh we got a real problem right now and yeah and so i think you know even moving into dating for the first time like myself like i can't i can't deal with some i can't deal with the another guy that doesn't have like an emotional vocabulary mm. like mm. as i'm trying to as i'm trying to elevate mine and of course i am far, i am not claiming to be perfect i'm far from it but it's like but one thing i do have is an expression with words i know how to express myself so i need that in you know in getting to know someone else and I, and that's just that's i don't know if you want to call that a deal breaker or you know something like that but it's just i need you to be able to express yourself like that's not going to happen 100 percent of the time no i don't not expecting perfection or anything like that but i can't i can't deal with the text that is one word mm. or you know i can't deal with half conversation you know i'm just like i'm just i like my patience is not there <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I can't do it. I can't do it. I like one of my like red flags is someone who's like doesn't have self awareness. Like mm-hmm. they're not aware of any of their own weaknesses. They're not aware of any of the like. I remember talking to somebody and we were just talking about like childhood. And I was like, "How was your childhood?" And he's like, "You don't need to know that. It doesn't matter." And I'm like, "Sounds oh. like it was traumatic. That's fine, but like." <laughs> I need you to work through that. <laughs> like, I, need, like, I need you sure. to work through that because you, whatever you're bringing in and not being able to work through anger, anxiety, childhood, trauma, any type of trauma, you're bringing that into a relationship. And if you're not able to kind of have that own like self-awareness, whatever that looks like, I always preach therapy. I'm a therapist. So like, please go to therapy. Please. I know that's not always easily accessible to everybody. Right. But you need to have something. Right. Right. And that's the biggest thing. Like having somebody or know knowing how to have that conversation uh with somebody. Um I oof, 
as many times as I try to have a conversation with some of these people out here, ooh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) No, and that's the thing. Like, when you feel like you got to have, like, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Like, and when you really feel like, damn, like, this is, like, almost beginning to be, like, a part-time, full-time job trying to have a conversation with somebody. And it's like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. I'm like, what am I briefing the benefits of? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely Mm -hmm. nothing. Absolutely nothing. And like sometimes because, you know, I'm primarily attracted to um, black men, uh, I'll be straightforward about that. And it's just to know uh, how much miseducation there is within the black community, as well as when it relates to sexual expression. And I've been looking at some people's profiles and reading them and I see somebody who's like, oh, I I like uh, I'm looking for a sub, I'm a dom and all this other stuff. And that I'd be into some of that. And I'm like, okay, you might be into some kink. So let me message you and figure out what this is and my main question i ask people is like what does it mean to you to be a dom and then is somebody who's only focusing on being in control in the situation or someone who's uh, conflating um dominance with aggression and i'm just like i cannot fuck around with you because your level of want and this control um, that you're looking for right now that's not going towards the kink thing like you like if you're in this space of being a true dom for somebody and having a submissive then you have to respect their boundaries you have to know what their uh flag like their greens their yellows their reds their heart stops you have to have be willing to have that conversation with them not that you just want to fully control everybody's actions so because i'm not trying to do that because I still have my own personal autonomy <laughs> within all these situations. And I'm quick to make somebody who think they're a dom into a sub. With, like, I don't mind doing it. <laughs> but Yeah. And, and I can always automatically tell about, like, the engagement level of a conversation because of the fact I have so many intersections, of course, of identity being Black, being pop being same gender loving being poly you know all of these different things about me and always the great conversations i will have is always the people that are asking questions like oh that's a, oh that's interesting like could you tell me more about that you know mm-hmm. and so i can always even from just the nature of text just even from the way people word their text messages like you can feel when something is coming off as being judgmental mm-hmm. you can feel when things are coming off as like a genuine interest or intrigue and you know, learning to like decipher that. And it's kind of like, listen, I, tr- I do my best, you know, not to judge, not to say this, that I don't judge, but it takes a lot for me to get to a place of being judgmental of someone else's, how someone else operates or lives their life. So I know that that's not that kind of energy that I'm coming in with. So if I feel like you're giving me that kind of energy right off the bat and you really don't even know me, it's, I can't, I can't interact with you because even from the nature of a text, it's just the, vibration and energy it's not there it's not there and that's one thing i really like about the poly community so like out of all the communities that i'm a part of like i have different spectrums too being pan poly you know black um getting more like involved in the poly and the lifestyle community they are like you don't have to do so much of this like sex education you don't have to do so much of this conversation about consent you don't have to do these conversations about communication right now there are some poly people that you have to like suss out like those couples that only want a girl (laughs) but then if a guy comes in it's a little issue Mm -hmm. but as a whole like the people in that community are already fully aware and most of them have already done the self-work because they started off as mono and then became Poly, mm-hmm. they had to do some sort of work to that transition right and that's what i like about um all those spaces um as i like i was and like, back to your point vernon as well like people who say that they're a dom or like uh, there's dominant and shit like that i used to be that way <laughs> but then i was like you know what i was like you know what i don't feel like a dominant so let me just switch back to being undecided then i was like all right maybe i'm a top because like i me personally i built up a, a image of what a dom is and i was like working towards that but then along the lines i was just like no this like after like thinking about it trying to you know get into the role and everything like that I was like, nah, this doesn't really fit me. Cause like, I'm not a very aggressive person. Um, and I'm not a very demanding, like, you know, or and I'm, I'm shit at keeping schedules. Um, <laughs> so like, I can't provide that a, a lot of structure for somebody. Um, I can't 
constantly be like telling someone to do something or you know building uh, uh, uh goals and all that shit for them in my spare time because that's just not fun to me um so you know that whole thing and then every time i'm ho- either hooking up with somebody or there's a connection with somebody or you know i'm just generally interested in somebody um they are always a part of either poly community um bdsm community um on some sort of uh you know queer spectrum or anything like that and i'm just like damn like because these people know like what how to have a conversation how to uh approach approach certain topics uh what's good and what's not good that kind of thing and with some of the people out here who are straight and not in those communities it's like either pulling teeth or you're being someone's teacher and i'm just like i i ain't got time for that shit (laughs) exactly like this is why i i personally refuse to hook up with anybody or even become um sexually intimate with anybody who's like new to the game like i need you to have had some type of experience because i'm not going to be your teacher like i'm not going to i don't want to hold your hand so that you can go through all the motions that you need to go through because you decided let me go ahead and experience this see if i like it i was curious whatever granted i recently did that because i had the expectation that they uh did meet up with somebody before and then turn out oh no you're you're actually my first uh queer experience and i'm just like look i'm not gonna help you process this i i i I cannot be that person but look i got this book you can read that if that will help you you can listen to the podcast i don't know but like (laughs) i'm not gonna be a teacher (laughs) and, and i think also when you're talking when you like talk about like poly communities and queer communities and you know just all of all of that i think also too like when i have met you know a few other you know poly people or i've met you know people in different spaces that are naturally like they're naturally nurturing of openness and you finding yourself like that's a very vast difference than what you will see in in like a heteronormative space like one of the main things that i've never gotten this reason and i'm saying and i said maybe because of the fact i've never dated i don't that's the reason why i don't get it but a lot of times when you'll hear people that say like when they're trying to get to know somebody like if they haven't been married by a certain age or they haven't had a lot of experience dating why that's why that's a red flag and i'm like and i've always had this attitude i'm like well why is that why is that a red red flag like if somebody has not been married at a by a certain age or had kids by a certain age or even has a lot of dating experience it's kind of like how sometimes people equate in their mind about virginity as something like to back away from it's like no you're just not sexually experienced that doesn't mean mm-hmm. like you're not you're bad at sex like you know so just like all of those kind of like things that go through people's head i'm just like that's a really like huge like heteronormative like space and usually typically when i'm talking to people in queer communities or poly communities or any other communities that i do have been to also be a part of it's much more of a nurturing environment where i will say like hey i've never dated and people will be like oh like that's interesting like tell me more you like tell me more about that like why why haven't you you know like what are you looking for and so it's a much more like it's just a much more loving it's a much more loving space and a place of curiosity where people are wanting to know more about you instead of like i say coming off in a judgmental you know as a judgmental place I definitely agree. And I feel like in heteronormative, like you get these like varied messaging. So yeah, it's like, I don't want a version, but then uh, if you have a certain amount of body count, then you're dirty. Or if you're this, then you're dirty. And it's like, well, which one am I? Because you don't want, you want someone who's sexually experienced, but you want them to only have been with three people. Like that doesn't necessarily make sense. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to do all these Gok Gok 3000 uh, <laughs> if I've only been with two people my whole life, exactly. right? Like, it's so varying, contradicting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I know one of the things that I've been um, trying to stress with some people, most definitely within queer spaces, that you're not, you don't have to live the heteronormative life. You don't, like, um, by definition, you don't fit heteronormative standards. So why 
continue to try to live your life in that way um like you get to write the script of your life you get to do whatever the hell that you want to do express your sexuality however you want to you don't have to have that masculine feminine feminine role you can have femme femme mask mask um trans mask trans femme you can have everything when it within this space you don't have to just go off of that binary of the heteronormative lifestyle uh and i i find that very absent absent uh, within a lot of queer spaces uh, unfortunately like i remember uh looking at on um i think it was jacked and seeing somebody's profile saying oh i don't you know i don't fuck around with some anybody who's um uh, mask or uh, and this is uh, somebody who's masculine saying that they only want femme people which is fine and then i also saw um a profile of someone who's trans and they were just like i don't want anybody that is femme i only want masculine people because what do we look like and that was like the shade that they were throwing to it's like <laughs> they're looking to uh, fit that standard of the heteronormative and i'm just like there's a lot that you like all of us can be doing outside of that mode right right and there comes a point where we have to retool and repurpose the conversation because like i was looking actually surprisingly like a very good twitter thread that was happening and somebody had posted about the fact of you know like i'm just tired of like relationships and stuff like that everybody always wants you to fit into a category and be like you know like gender roles and stuff like that and i don't believe in that and stuff like that and okay yeah that's all well and good but i did like how some people did point out is to say like well one some people like gender roles mm. like in their relationships mm. like let's let's just put that out there some people do like gender roles but what was really the tweets that were capturing me were the ones that i was seeing about yeah i mean i agree but let's kind of like restructure the nature of the conversation like no i don't necessarily believe in in gender roles but some people were saying like but typically when we are in relation with people we do take on certain roles and like i even like the analogy that somebody said it's like relationships are like a dance like two people can't be leading at the same time otherwise you're going to go in the misdirection and so that's not to say that I'm going to be leading all the time or this person is going to be leading all the time. But you do have to, you know, you do step into certain roles, you know, when you're mm -hmm. in relation with people. And so, you know, I was liking how, you know, a lot of people in the thread were trying to like, hey, let's like repurpose or retool this conversation. That's an age old, you know, conversation. Mm -hmm. But I, I was liking the fact that, you know, people were trying to steer the conversation in another direction instead of just shutting down as to say like, oh, gender roles bad, you know, <laughs> or gender roles good. Like, come on. Like for me, I, I think of uh, like gender role. I, I'm not necessarily a fan of gender roles. Uh, I, I am more of a fan of choosing a role that is um, beneficial towards the relationship in terms mm -hmm. of like, uh, like the traditional gender roles is all set within the mindset that you have this one person who does this and the other person that does that um, rather than we can interchange that throughout. Like uh, if you're the male of the household, that you have to be the person, you know, the breadwinner instead of just that dynamic having that okay it's also fine for um the woman to be the breadwinner and that's like the conversation that is i would say is for not focused on a lot in terms of the flu um the fluid nature of that rather than it just being gender specific just hey this person has this role in the house this person has that role regardless of what they are uh, sexually or uh, in terms of identity right and that's why we need so such you know inclusive Edu education because you know i can only imagine how it is like for kids especially nowadays growing up so confused like no matter how you identify because it's like i can't you know for like young, you know self-identifying young men it's like you want to be respectful but then it's like if you are laid back too much then it can read like you don't care mm -hmm. you're not being chivalrous but then if you're too chivalrous then you're stepping on you know an identifying woman's toe you know toes same thing i think for i you know identifying women how many times do you know women get the messages of they got to be on their game they got to be the boss but you know it's kind of like yeah i am that way professionally i don't want to be that in relationships so it's like you know so many just mixed messages that you know we get as you know we're coming up it's like okay by the time i get here it's like okay now what the hell to do 
<laughs> like, okay, like I'm here for now. What the hell is this? This is why I'm just like, motherfuckers, just be human. Just be human. Like, <laughs> treat people with kindness and let that be it. <laughs> yeah, and just do what works for you. I think I had to, like, learn, like, one, I don't fit this archetype of being, like, this submissive woman. I, I don't. I would prefer to work and someone else do the cleaning. That's just me. So, like, I think figuring out what works for you and being honest in that, right? Like, doing all of that stuff in yeah it may get you a man or whatever you're looking for but will you be happy is it reciprocal right i remember watching i think i talked to vernon about this in the last like episode like there was this lady who was like i have an eight count for my boyfriend i do this 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 for him and the lady was like well what does he do for you and her response was uh well i'm pretty simple there isn't much that he has to do for me like, no, we need something, we need reciprocity here. Like, what makes you happy? What are the things, what is your eight count? Are you communicating that with him? And that's the thing, like, I've met plenty of people who are just like, uh, you know, uh, you should be doing, or you should be doing this as the man. And even as a person who kind of like is on that cis side, right? Like, I'm just like, yo, don't tell me what the fuck to do. <laughs> do not tell me what to do. Um, because, like, there are certain things that I'm amazing at. And thinking is one of them. But actually doing shit and having to keep it on a set schedule, I am not good at that shit. So that's where I'm just like, okay, like, you know, how do I do this? Dan like, like you said, it's a dance. Like, I like to be, you know, over here sometimes, or sometimes I like to be over here. It just depends on the person that they, uh, the energy that the person is giving me. Um, cause I'm very reflective of that. And, and you know, something that was really, uh, eye opening, even though I have like obviously certain problems with him, like I do kind of like what Steve Harvey said one time, like during when he had his talk show on, and he was saying that one of the first things like he like did when he like met his wife was that um there were just he was you know like you say i was completely honest with her there are just certain things like household things i don't do but he framed it in the context just because i don't do it doesn't mean i expect you to do it so it's kind of like if you don't do it we can hire somebody to do it mm -hmm. so like i like that approach so it's kind of like you know framing the conversation i'm telling you what i just don't do i don't do so i'm laying that very out clearly take that or leave it I'm not putting the fact that I don't do it on you. I'm not expecting you to do it, but just know if you don't, then we'll just hire somebody to do it. And I had to really identify with that because even just growing up, like there are just certain things I didn't do. I was not like an outside doors kind of child. So therefore there were certain chores I was not doing. I was not mowing the lawn. I was not, you know, outside, you know, like, you know, doing like, like what you would typically associate with like chores. Like I didn't do that. Like the most I did was like wash clothes and clean, you know, make sure, you know, the house was clean at the, at the very most. So my family would get on me, like, as you know, I was growing up as to say like, why doesn't he, you know, like do certain things. And you know, King, it's like you said, because I don't like being told what the hell to do. <laughs> and y'all don't live in my household. So therefore y'all opinion does not matter. <laughs> I, I'm I know I'm like a huge stay at home dad at this point because I'm just like one look I, I, there's a lot of things that I, I'm not like I'm not going out to the mole on I love those people who do it I respect you I fucks with you it's just look but no I just don't want to do it <laughs> but I'm like grass <laughs> right right but like I, I'm open with painting a fucking house I could uh I don't mind like building something indoors like a uh, like a fucking table if I need to build a fucking table I do know how to do that surprisingly like I <laughs> I don't mind like uh fixing dinner washing clothes I do not dust I need to dust my apartment I'll be honest look it's, it's been like two months three months probably I'm allergic <laughs> <laughs> like, like if i have a pet i would be a lot better at dusting but look i i love vacuuming actually uh like let, give me a vacuum i will like give me that little uh fragrance to that um you know the powder that you put on the floor oh mm -hmm, carpet cleaning shit is good yeah. smelling yeah. great uh i kind of have this thing for bleach 
I hate using bleach, but I love the smell of bleach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, look, I will like when I clean the bathroom, I just let the bleach soak in a little bit. You know, do what it needs to do. Walk out, probably wash the dishes, come back up in this mofo, scrub the shits, and then I will just bask in that ambiance of <sighs> a nice bleachy smell. Life is good. <laughs> I don't know. Like when I started cleaning stuff, I'm just like, man, I wish I could just throw this whole room away. <laughs> wow. Like <laughs> well, it just thought over. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say my uh because I'm looking at a, a pile of mail right now. That's my thing. Getting rid of old mail. I'm horrible at that. I need somebody who's just playing motherfucker you have not read this thing you said you was going to read it throw it in the trash <laughs> if it was something important you pro- it's probably already expired now <laughs> but you know it's kind of like the downside to like dealing with people is like for certain things that you don't do but you know other people do it's like damn i need them <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to be a user but i do i think the same thing like that you love like washing dishes cool because i hate like i the food particles i can't <laughs> and now certain thing, and now certain things i do avoid because like with me being only five three like you know so people will joke and laugh about like oh so you got so what you do when you put things on top shelf i'm like well hello there's step stools for a reason but two i just avoid you know putting things on the top shelf so everything is cluttered up together i just don't use certain cabinets in my face <laughs> there you go. Right. I support. <laughs> <laughs> well, to get back on topic, uh, how how do you all manage uh, or maintain an effective rotation with the roster or potentials? Flirting. Flirting. Yeah, flirting. Hmm. You know, send them like, but hey, think about you. You know, you yeah. know, just send just some like, hey. Flower. I don't know. Like, send them emoji. I, shit. Like, let just, them know that. Just let them know, know that, that they're still around. That you yeah, still yeah, think yeah. about them. Exactly. Exactly. Because, like, one of those things that, pro- you know, proximity and stuff like that. Like, out of sight, out of mind. If you never say anything, it's easy to forget. That kind of thing. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I would say yeah. Just. Uh, check. Yeah, I always just generally, and I do this for people who are just friends, people who are friends with benefits or whatever. Like, I just like send like check in texts, like, hey, you know, it's been a minute, you know, just wanted to check in with you, hope all is well. And, you know, that can even just start a dialogue going. Cause, you know, like people, like, we go, we going through some shit. <laughs> mm. like, like, so you never know. And some people, they have different ways of, you know, coping and dealing with that. Some people, you know, they kind of, fall off the reservation so you know like he was saying if it's just you know a smiling emoji or you know just something that you know will brighten somebody's day you know it doesn't need to be anything overbearing or you know too much um but also you know too i think also knowing get, like feeling people's energy and knowing like their different moods like when you know that they kind of are busy with work or school and you know like they're kind of like falling off a little bit that may be a time for you to check in with them it may be a time for you to like entertain like other you know prospects as Sharita was saying maybe those bench warmers you know like uh, so yeah just knowing I think vetting like people's like moods and personalities as to know when you need to check in with them and when you know like hey you know just uh, give some people some space yeah I would just kind of continue off of what both of them are saying like communication whatever communication looks like for them right I have friends that I just send like videos and like TikTok videos to and that's just how we kind of maintain that um there's people that I send gifts to and then there's some people that I know like love these kind of long text paragraph type things and depending on if I have the capacity that would probably be someone that I'm a lot closer to I would do that that little check-in seeing how their day is going and things of that nature but any type of kind of communication is really great Mm. I was uh I'm I'm with y'all with that definitely with the communication like even with the my current potentials I do check on them every now and again sometimes like if somebody crossed my mind uh, I've gotten to the point 
because I know that if I do not message them that night, I'm going to forget to message them in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes, depending on the time, I might send myself a text message like, hey, check on so-and-so, uh, see how they're doing. And then when I wake up in the morning, I remember, okay, let me go ahead and, you know, check on this person. But usually I just say, uh, send a message like, hey, how, how are things? What you been up to? Getting updates on their situation, see how things are going. Um, and leave it at that. Uh, sometimes it might come in, uh, move up to planning our next um, outing or uh, hooking up together um, even if it happens or doesn't happen but just checking in because I always focus on uh, remembering that there's a human on the other side of this phone uh, and respecting that and knowing that sometimes people are going through some things uh, and uh, mostly this is for you Sharita uh, in terms of like uh, roster and building roster uh, would you say that your experience with building a roster is different like your approach is different uh, pre-pandemic versus current um, or would you say things are like pretty much the same um I think the way in which I built a roster was different like before the pandemic it was so much easier because I, as i said most of my roster would be happenstance mm -hmm. and so before the pandemic it was so much easier to just meet people in person and have that kind of energy and vibe i think after the pandemic it was a lot more of like dating apps and i'm not a huge fan of that mm -hmm. so when i kind of had a roster last year it was a little bit harder like i would have to work more and like communicating mm -hmm through like apps versus in person and I'm more of an in-person type mm. of thing. So. Same. Y'all have any comments on that? Yeah, uh, yeah I think um, I think general, genuinely just how I like to meet people is um, kind of twofold. Like it just depends on like the social setting that, that I may be in. So like I like to, you know, be engaged with people um, but I also know like I kind of get to know and vet people a little bit more if I like meet them, you know, online or something like that. So um, versus like in person, like it's on the spot, like you have no choice but to react in certain, you know, in certain situations and stuff like that. So I think the nature of how I think about the list, you know, that I have, it it fluctuates and it, and it changes. You know, I think before the pandemic, it was much more like, yeah, I could meet you in person or online and, you know, like, to see where it is that you fit in and then of course once the pandemic happened and of course you have to be very careful about more so careful about you know who it is that you know you interact with and you know a lot of thoughts you know maybe going through your head about maybe like who they've been around and you know just things like that started to like creep in a lot more so um the list got definitely like even just like even shorter than what it was um and so yeah it, it yeah it definitely did um went through like a variation you know type thing so um well i would say that like for me like pre-pandemic i wasn't really like building building a roster it was like like sharita said like happenstance kind of stuff um but now post pan like post pandemic kind of kinda. <laughs> yeah kind of great um, I'm trying to like get out more and like you know go to different states get part of be a part of different groups um go to conventions all that kind of stuff and just kind of like tap my network um because i'm kind of bad at like keeping up with different people and stuff like that um usually they like either reach out to me or like i just like think about them and i'm like hey how's that person doing um or like i go to sleep at night and then i have a weird dream and i'm like hey somebody need my help man like who what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah like just trying to get out get out more um and you know experience a bunch of different um experiences because i'm that kind of person that likes things to be organic mm -hmm. um so like if i meet somebody in the coffee shop and then i meet them at walmart and then i see them again like at target or somewhere else i'm like hey, i didn't see you like three times you kind of cute like what's up that kind of stuff yeah well, I got two more questions before we end it out. And uh, for the first one, Tyrell, if you need to leave after this, because I want you to be on time for your damn date. Um, mm -hmm. We all do, because look, you're going to be on time for that, motherfucker. But um, <laughs> we, um, the first question, I want you to answer first. And if you need to hard out, hard out. Um, but this question is, would you put 
Uh, I'm going to use word holes. Uh, it does no. I'm po positive about the word holes. So, would you put your holes in a group chat? Would you put the people on your roster in a group chat together? Oh. No, no, and the re <laughs> yeah, no, and, <laughs> yeah. As I think about that, real no, uh, and it's not even because of like feeling like oh i'm about to be caught or you know it's like something like that no it would just be because like i attract like different like personality types and even though like it's not anything like ex like far-fetched you know like so i do like interact with people who have like similar personalities and stuff like that i just feel like very like anxious about it because i don't like like mixed company and I don't care whether that's in person or even just like group text. I hate group text, actually, um, <laughs> just in general. So it's like, yeah, for me to like have like my quotation list in a group chat, like just would give me amounts of anxiety for like just no reason for for them. For them. But it's like I would be having like a full blown panic attack. <laughs> mm, I get that. Hakeem, because your face said it all. Hey, look, I like chaos, but <laughs> 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 like, so I, I like, like Tyrell, I do attract a bunch of different personalities. However, I will say this, they either are brats or they like are freaking, <laughs> or they just like real hood ghetto chicks that been through some shit, but they like have some sort of awakening and shit. <laughs> I would love to be in your group chat. <laughs> <laughs> I would be entertained. That sounds, that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds hella interesting. Like, because I'm thinking about this one specific person. Like, she told me, like, she was like, yeah, I can't. I don't like white people. And I was like, hold on here. Like, most of my friends are, like, white. Like, I can't. I, I like white people. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, no, nah, can't do it. They got pink dicks. I was like, what? what's wrong with a pink dick? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would <laughs> I would do it. However, I would have to have like a lot of ground rules. And like Tyrell, I'd be anxious every second. <laughs> yeah, anytime you get the notifications like, oh shit, what now? Yeah. <laughs> what she didn't do? <laughs> it's like, what's this? Like, uh uh. Mm. I would. I think it'd be fun. Uh, I tend to gravitate towards intellectuals, but also like super nerdy anime people. So I think they would get along. And even if they didn't, they would still like be open minded. And so I think that would be cool. And they all like when I did have a roster, they all knew. Like I, there was one time I was like talking to a guy, and I was like, "Yeah, so and so came over and we just fucked." And then that same day, I fucked the other guy, and I was like, "Okay, you know, it is what it is." Yeah. See, I would love to be in your group chat too. Like that, I feel like w there is some room for a great conversation, so I'm here for that. <laughs> um, I I will have a group chat with uh my roster i just know my regular cannot be in there because that motherfucker gets a little bit too possessive sometimes and it's just like <laughs> motherfucker with that dating so it's like i would do that just without that motherfucker in there because like most of the people i do hook up with they're very open about um their sexuality and expressing it in different ways most of, if you if you made it the roster you got to be on that level anyways but you know um they probably be will be setting up shit amongst themselves and i'm just like in a group chat like am i free like what y'all planning this shit like what can i join this motherfucking meetup am i not invited didn't i start this shit i will kick y'all out my group chat <laughs> not really not really but i feel like that's what will be going on in mine uh and a lot of uh conversations about um like random shit and i know that at least like from my potentials right now ooh, actually it will actually have the potential to be like a legit orgy up in there because there's like um uh, two bottoms that would be on there one top one burst dude and yeah i i might need to start a group chat <laughs> <laughs> weren't we talking about orgies like the other episode yeah for your oh, birthday yeah. right so, oh yeah mm, look at that birthday orgy mm. 
birthday orgy plan. Look at God. And look, and look it, <laughs> it all started with a group pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. So the last question of the episode. Are rosters worth it? Who wants to tackle that first? Um, I think a roster is worth it. Um, only because it gives you <clears throat> a lot of variety. Um, in addition to like if you're on that level with the people that are on your roster, it gives you an outlet. It's like a like a little not I don't want to say family, but mm. like <laughs> a, a, a enmeshment of people that you can also like shmang, <laughs> smash bang fusion. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a song? Yes. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> That's the dude with the I'm yeah. so done. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> no, I, I definitely agree though. I think that having a roster can be a good thing if you are intentional and you know how you want to use your roster as well. Like, you know, I definitely don't want to, you know put this out there like rosters are not for just categorizing people in your life they're not you know for um keeping a list about who's you you know who you believe is the best at sex and all that type stuff it's really just about you prioritizing your your needs at particular at particular times you know and i think sharita you said it best earlier there are some people that yeah if i call i know i can just you know um i can just call up and cuddle with I know that those people who like I want to spend like yes yeah, some hours with them in the bed in you know the bedroom or you know wherever and so you know it is it is kind of categorizing in a way but not doing it in a way that diminishes or disrespects any you know anyone so I think knowing what you want to use your roster for no matter if that's just pure affection hey you could just be having a roster just because you want to have a movie night or something you know like mm. if that's your prerogative then hey you know you go with it so have a roster but know what you're using the roster for yes i like that message and i agree uh with both of them <laughs> um you know me i'm really i'm really for like serial dating and i think having a roster is a way for you to do that right getting to know people getting to know people at different levels of intimacy um just being you know just want to make sure that it's reciprocal though mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. if you find out as we've kind of talked about before if you're having a roster of people but all they do is hit you up at two o'clock in the morning with the what you do in text that may not be something that's reciprocal for you right mm -hmm. so finding like finding people that actually go aligned with what you're looking for and what you're wanting kind of piggyback on what, what terrell said yeah. Yes, I'm with all of that. Um, my my main thing is make sure that those people that you include on your roster know that they're on a the roster and you communicate with uh, communicate that with them. Like just be open about it. Uh, like it's not to say like it's not one of those let's play these games, let's act like all secretive and whatnot and let people know, hey, we're involved, we're having a good time. I have these intentions, um, these expectations about how we're in going to engage with each other and just respect the other person that's going to be involved in that. Not everybody wants to know that they're on a the roster. That's perfectly fine. I get that. Uh, if, if you come across one of those people, you don't have to let them know. Um, but just have that honest communication uh, with the people who you are engaging with that, hey, you're not the only person or whatever. Uh, I think on one of these episodes, um, we were talking about She's Gotta Have It. That's a great show to watch. Because... Um, <clears throat> Uh, oh girl she did what she needed to do and i loved it for her because she had like her rotation going on and i respect it and i loved it that's all i could say um on that note and just even, oh, and just, if i could just throw in these two little nuggets as well also a good way to vet if you i think for me like if you want to see if somebody is a good you know match to be on your your list is to you know bring up the topic ask the question but like let it simmer for a minute and then bring it up again because you know a lot of times people will tell you something in the moment mm. and you never know like they're you know they could be having second thoughts their minds could have changed they could have not been being honest at first so figure out a way to like broach the topic again to see like if their mind if you know somebody's minds have changed and even if that and that also includes yourself if you're on somebody's list 
obviously as well like don't allow yourself to be cohorsed Mm. into thinking that this is something that you want with this person when it's really when it's really not so a part of having the list is to know that if you were in the opposite situation would you be okay with this amen Amen. on that note i want to thank y'all so much for recording this episode with me i love y'all so so fucking much except for hakeem Um, (laughs) (laughs) i gotta do it to the twin y'all i gotta do it to the twin i love y'all um uh, <laughs> <Blaine> took <Turkver. laughs> there's so much more uh to come with Hovember. got four more episodes uh, to go and also um the break is coming up so there's not going to be any episodes coming out of the whole little quick podcast for about three months we'll be returning uh, in march motherfuckers we'll be returning we will be returning uh on that note thank you all so much for listening to the whole little quick podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality just in case no one else told you this today you are beautiful you are worthy of happiness and joy you are enough and then some you may not live up to the expectations of others but that is okay you are only required to walk in your own shoes may each day you live lead you towards abundance with that said love you all and see you next episode bye thank you for listening to the holiloquy podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality you can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com that's www.heaux L-I-L-O-Q-U-Y dot com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.